welcome to Art Cave, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Frank Creek High School correspondent, Amanda Williams. This June, we will close out the school year and we will take a look at how students are studying the environment and recycling. They're using technology in innovative ways and they are showing off their talents. Plus, we have these students' stories. Ballard High School students got an exclusive visit on how to protect wild bird of prey. Dance Maroon is a six hour marathon benefiting kids with cancer. Kindergartners at Klondike Lane Elementary studied animals and their ecosystems. They used recycled materials to create their own displays. Hi, my name is Abby Rudd. I'm going to tell you about my polar bear. It lives in the Arctic. It eats, it eats fish and seals. And they move their heads to show that it's playtime. And they are good swimmers. We are at Klondike Elementary today and this is the most exciting day of the entire year because we have been working on our project-based learning. We've been learning about animals and habitats and recycling, and it really incorporates every subject. It incorporates reading and writing and science and art and technology. My name is Daniel, and I made a tiger shark to make the bills and the tail. And I used some cotton balls and some mini cotton balls for the eye. We could put this project in every one of the components of our backpack. Hi, my name is the one. I'm going to tell you about my coyote. The, hab the habitat is the desert. The diet is they eat deers and chickens. We have used recycled products and we've learned how we need to save our earth and help our animals and, and human beings. And we've taken these recycled items and turned them into an animal. So what's this? It's tail? What's this here? Everything that you see is student created. It is their day. Everything that you see today is their product. They had a say in everything that you see today. Uh, when they started kindergarten, we had a lot of students that could not speak English. We had students that did not know the letters, um, that did not know how to hold a pencil. And it is so exciting because now you see we are readers, we are writers. Uh, we, can, we were partnered up with third graders and did research on our animals on our Chromebooks. So it's just a very, very exciting day. Wagner High School students volunteered at the Family Scholar House. It was part of the Mayor's Give a Day Week. We are from Wagner High School. We are volunteering, making eggs for the kids so they can learn their words, like let, live, may, say, she, soon. Sight words that they can learn to like put in a sentence and stuff like that. We are at Family Scholar House. Take, think, them. Wagner High School students were just here. They were helping me create sight word eggs which are little eggs that we use for our kids and they flip them over when they learn their sight words. We were making eggs so that like the kids can like learn like the letters and stuff so like they're better at like literacy and stuff. It makes us feel great because we're making a name for ourselves as like beautiful people that are doing beautiful things for beautiful people. It's really an honor actually to get the help like give out. We have been a feature. Yeah. It means so much here at Family Scholar House. If it wasn't for our volunteers and for our donors, we wouldn't be where we are today. They mean so much to us, and I know our residents uh, really appreciate them as well. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. I know our kids will appreciate it. Students at the Academy of Shawnee Middle School showed off some of their technical skills since becoming part of the Verizon Innovative Learning Program. It intersects at 3 and it intersects at 9. We know that a parabola is symmetrical. I go to the Academy at Shawnee Middle School. I'm an 8th grader here and these iPads have really helped a lot in the past few months. It helped us learn and everything and um, I think they're a great change to what we've been doing. We are at Shawnee Middle School and we are hosting the Leadership Summit for the Verizon Innovative Learning Schools. We just finished our first year with the grant um, implementing one-to-one -one iPads in our school. So this is like there's an X here. We have 52 schools across the country that will be a part of Verizon Innovative Learning and they are experiencing best practices at the schools um, at JCPS that have been a part of the program for the last year. 
we use it for homework, so we get to take it home. And for those that don't have Wi-Fi, we have data packages. Mm -hmm. And especially since all of us have it, we get to help each other out. So if there's any problems, if we can't log into something, another person, such as like a tech team member, could help. With the iPads, the students have so much access to all these different programs that they can be doing um, to the point where like I make a project and I have kids completing it five different ways because there's just so many, it's, the opportunities are endless. To be honest, as a student, I know some people think that homework's been really bad, but once you take these home, they, it's more fun to do and a lot more cool. This is the mission of Verizon. We want to make sure that we are creating a path to a better future for students across the country. And we're going to go back to Desmos. So your code is on the board. We can't just hand teachers an iPad and students an iPad and expect that all of a sudden learning's got to change. There needs to be coaching, there needs to be support, there needs to be ongoing professional development. And I think that that's the key that Verizon Innovative Learning is providing. I also like that they don't have to carry a lot of books home anymore. <laughs> um, they've completely gone you know, to a technology classroom and um, they're thrilled about it. Raptor Rehab visited Ballard High School to make students aware of their program and how they can help disabled birds. Mrs. Kale's zoology class recently got an exclusive visit from Raptor Rehab with some very special bird guests. Raptor Rehabilitation of Kentucky is a nonprofit organization that rescues and rehabilitates sick birds. Raptor Rehab rescues anywhere from 250 to 300 sick, injured, and orphaned birds each year and releases 60% of them back into the wild. Volunteers go to different places to educate citizens on different types of birds and what their organization does. Raptor Rehab recently came to Ballard to teach Miss Kale's class about different birds and about their organization. This is Kachina, and Kachina, of course, is a turkey vulture. Um, there's two kinds of vultures that we have in Kentucky. The turkey vulture, of course, is the pretty one because he's got white all the way the length of each, uh, each wing. The students were able to take away a lot of interesting facts, so we asked what they learned from the organization. Oh, I took away that it's very important to keep habitats alive, especially birds, and it's very, very easy for birds to go extinct, um, so you should always be careful uh, when you're interacting with wildlife. I learned that like when you go hunting and you shoot the bullet that you should probably take it out because when like a bird comes to eat the carcass of the animal that you've left behind, it could get uh, lead poisoning and it could really harm the bird. I'm Emma Bearden for Our Kids. We have a lot more stories to come. Stay with us. Attendance in school is vital to a student's success. That's why we're taking a bold step in launching our first ever district-wide student attendance campaign, encouraging students to commit to missing no more than six days of school this year. It's unlike anything we've ever done before. Picture pop-up parties, school celebrations and incentives. We are teaming up with community partners, local businesses and celebrities to share the message about the importance of attendance. Every day counts. Great things are beginning to happen here. We're really looking for this being a central hub, a place where we can provide supports for students, tutoring for students, classes for parents, families, ACT support, all kinds of supports that the community can get engaged with. We see this being central to our summer learning, our backpack camp initiative. And this is the type of work that is so important. Welcome back to our kids. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent, Amanda Williams. The Brazier Museum got a special performance of the Broadway smash Hamilton by students at Olmstead Academy North. We're at the Fraser Museum and uh, we just performed My Shot from Hamilton, the musical. Uh, we go to, I go to Olmstead Academy North, we're at Bastard Choir. Hey, yo, my tail is apprentice, and I got John Knuckleheads, a local parentis. I'm joining the rebellion, because no, it's my chance to socially advance. Learning the lines <laughs> actually isn't that difficult, but doing it all together at the exact same time, making sure that it's all perfect, it's actually pretty difficult making sure that everybody has it down at the same time and isn't off beat or off track. When you live it, when you need to rise up. Well, I think it's really important that we make sure you're in the room where it happens. Do you know what that means? 
Gentlemen, you're going to Hamilton. We really brought you here. The Frazier is really doing door prizes, but the main thing, you all realize you've been pumped. This was to get you here to say you get to go. We're going to be going to see Hamilton live in theater. And to those who have gone to the same as you and me, you and I are doing it all. With Sasha Salim on the stallion with the first black battalion. I think it's very special because of. Like, you know, I read the St. Tom and social studies, we're learning about Alexander Hamilton and stuff like that. And the stuff that we're reading about, we're going to see, like, get played out. Faith Elementary has been a site of Safety City for more than 25 years. Students learn important skills about vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle safety. Look left, look right, look left again. Left, look right, look left again. Today is a exciting day for us as we come together to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Safety City. Go. The name is Safety City and this place is the most important place because this teaches children and also children to remind adults how to cross the street safely and drive safely. These guys are for, have a presentation if you all want to turn that around. Dr. Richard S. Wolf Highway, founder. Since 2001, pedestrian injuries are down 41% in Jefferson County. Bike injuries are down 59%. Um, and just those two stats alone show, I believe, um, just the impact that this program has had um, on our kids. And there is very little doubt that Safety City has saved lives for children in this community. Ready? Turn around, watch where you're going to push foot down on that button. Go! And also a person who was here from the very beginning was one of our Safety City educators, Steve Hill. Uh, Steve, is, Steve has been with us from the very beginning of the project. He started teaching here in 1992 when he was an officer at Louisville Metro Police Department. 25 years later, he is still with us educating children in our community. I can go home and tell my family about this, like, but, like, family how to, like, tell them, like, what's about safety. Like, I tell them, Mom, I make sure I, like, look left, look right, look left again and make sure I'm going. I see no buses or cars coming. Look left, look right, look left again. Look left, look right, look left again. More than 400 students gathered at the 23rd Annual Men of Quality Lifestyle Choice Forum on UofL's campus. And don't be afraid to turn to the amazing people in this room, the folks that have come with you, and say you are a man of quality. We're at the uh, University of Louisville uh, Student Union Center. We're having our 23rd annual uh, Lifestyle Choices Forum with our men of quality groups that are in most of the uh, high schools, middle schools, and some elementary schools throughout JCPS. It's recognized and honored for taking part in the Men of Quality Initiative, an extraordinary program created by Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Inc. with the premise of helping young African American men set goals and realize that the future belongs to those who are they have workshops to where they can uh, learn different aspects of uh, mentorship, working financial aid, uh, how to manage their money, what to look for, you know, going to college, different things to uh, just becoming a man and being a man in uh, today's society. Mental quality is basically men that was well, boys that turned to men. Like the responsible, the nice, respectful. Yes, sir, you know me, um, stuff like that. We grow up thinking it's okay, we watch TV, and we see celebrities, they flipping and making it rain. And are you efficient? Can you articulate your words? Can you speak with some authority? Can you command people's attention? How many of you think you're really ready? How many of you are scared a little bit? We're giving that time and effort, and we will see these young people in our future being leaders or successful throughout their life and careers. You, got, you basically have to have precision in itself, be able to grow inside of school and all. Students at 
Purity High School visited a classroom at Smyrna Elementary to bring us this story on fifth grade math. So I'm going to fill in my box from here. Guys, does it have to be beautiful? No. 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 Hi, my name is Kristen Carey. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Smyrna Elementary. Today you saw a lesson on composite figures using volume. And so today we started putting together rectangular prisms and finding the volume of those. I noticed that a lot of my students don't understand so much the um, idea of volume being solid. So there were several different that um, were not solid figures and we got to go from there. Now that's really, really big. You're not going to be able to completely fill that up. I'd say about six inches. From this experience, um, some of the things that we learned about instructional strategies are basically just, you know, how to break it down step by step because, um, you know, a lot of times with fifth graders, if you give them too many steps at a time, they will start to kind of get overwhelmed. And then basically just letting them understand and let them explore to find their own volumes and to make sure that they, um, that they were able to relate it back to something that they care about. Students at Ballard High School raise money for pediatric cancer at their annual Dance Marin. Tori Mentier brings us the story. Each year, students at Ballard High School come together to support pediatric cancer research done at the University of Louisville. And tonight, we are doing our six-hour dance marathon, which we do every year. And basically, we just come out here, we try to have like a lot of fun. So this is Dance Maroon, and we're raising money for kids with pediatric cancer, and it's for the research. Throughout the night, different speakers that have been impacted by cancer go and share their story to the students. Uh, it means a lot. I obviously, uh, like everybody here, we dance for the people who can. And uh, both my grandparents passed away from cancer, so it's really important to me to making a difference like this. This is my first experience with Dance Maroon. Um, I've heard about it all through the four years of being here. But I think this time, just as a senior, I kind of wanted to come. Um, it's very fun. I'm not a very active person, but I'm still finding ways to like, get involved. Plans are underway for next year's Dance Maroon. I'm Tori Mentier for Our Kids. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more stories about JPPX. JCPS serves over 100,000 students, and with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it can serve natural resources, help the environment, and save money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We are JCPS, and we recycle. Yeah! Attendance in school is vital to a student's success. That's why we're taking a bold step in launching our first ever district-wide student attendance campaign, encouraging students to commit to missing no more than six days of school this year. It's unlike anything we've ever done before. Picture pop-up parties, school celebrations, and incentives. We are teaming up with community partners, local businesses, and celebrities to share the message about the importance of attendance. Every day counts. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Amanda Williams. GE Appliances has made a commitment to Doss High School by investing in a virtual classroom for students to communicate with employees in real time. So now we're here with you live um, to answer any questions that you have. Um, so give us a wave so we can uh, see you guys there. <laughs> awesome, cool. We're at uh, Doss High School and uh, we're doing a virtual classroom with several of the students. Yeah, I think the virtual classroom is able to bring Appliance Park to the classroom. Um, we want to introduce us, they monitor the current. And the people can see uh, the different skill sets that are needed, talk to the people, uh, go into labs, see what kind of equipment is being used, and really just start interfacing uh, with the people and getting to know the, the environment without really having to be there. How, if when you were in high school, would you have been able to learn about, or did you even know what those were, and how long did it take you to learn the things that you're doing now? I had no idea anything about homes, but being out here, I've been out of school almost two years now. And I think uh, we want to be a leader in manufacturing, and we need uh, a career and technical people to do that. And the more we get involved with the high school and pique their interest and get them really excited about what we have to offer, uh, we can start 
training them and getting them to uh, be our future employees so, so we can be the industry leaders that we want to be. And I love what I do. We're back here at Appliance Park, which is the headquarters of GE Appliances, right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And I would love to see uh, Appliance Park uh, be uh, a, a DOS magnet, let the people have the career and the rewards that I've achieved out there. I, I'd love to see the same thing for them. <laughs> Crumbs Lane Elementary students got a visit from the University of Louisville's head basketball coach and his family for the opening of Coach Max Corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi guys. How are you? Uh, to come back to you know, Christie's Kindergarten School uh, is it, pretty special. Yeah, it was it was a pretty easy choice for me, and this is just this area in general is really special. Um, driving over here this morning. Uh, just seeing from where I walked from school to my great-grandfather's house um, brought back a lot of memories and, and, and Louisville is, is such a wonderful place and we're just happy that our family is able to contribute back to the community in some way. Three, two, one. Cuddy! Right. <laughs> awesome. Good job, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the Max for jumping in and helping JCPS kids helping Crumbs Lane Elementary School kids to be better readers um, and to be more engaged and passionate in school through this great library. We want to know that you're actually putting it in what? A book. A book, okay? Uh, we want to be able to inspire kids that, you know, hey, it opens a lot of doors as you get older. And so uh, if it can be fun for them and they can enjoy some of the material and some of the things that they're reading, hopefully that continues uh, to inspire them as they go through their grade school years. And the tree said, come boy, Come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. We absolutely love the Coach Mac Corner and we thank Coach Mac and his family for partnering with us in providing our school with more books because we love to read, don't we? Yeah! We love to read. U of L athletes visited Big Elementary to share handwritten notes of encouragement on the K Prep test. We are here at Dan C. Bick Elementary School. You can talk to them, you can ask them questions if you want to. We are here today with the UofL student athletes. We start our K prep testing next week, which is our state accountability testing. And UofL athletes are here to give our students some encouraging words, and they've written letters for all of our students. Your teacher told me that you have K prep testing coming up soon. We I actually got every single team involved, um, whether that was football to rowing to track to softball. Uh, every student athlete wrote a good amount of letters. All right, one more time, he wrote them. So we all wanted to just encourage them and just from all aspects of the e-sport. How you guys doing? What's up, man? What's your name? How you guys doing? What's your And we really enjoy helping out these kids and encouraging them and going to school visits and because we know that they look up to us a lot and we really enjoy like make, putting a smile on their face and just having a positive influence on them. Good luck on your K prep test. You're going to do great. Love baseball is cheering you on. Good luck today. I know you're going to do great today. Just relax, take a deep breath. It's very exciting to have the UofL student athletes because um, our students look up to student athletes. Um, a lot of students in our school are UofL fans, so being able to make a connection and have someone um, from outside of the school encourage them to do a good job is a big deal for our students. We are UofL. JCPS has kicked off an anti-vaping campaign called Vaping Equals. Smoking is prohibited on all school properties. Today, Jefferson County Public Schools is announcing the launch of our anti-vaping campaign that's called Vaping Equals. In Louisville, we've recognized this threat. In 2017, we included, included e-cigarettes and hookah products under our city's smoke-free ordinance, which now prohibits smoking and vaping in all indoor public places and work sites. The brain is the last organ to fully develop. Brain development continues to the mid-20s. Nicotine exposure during periods of significant brain development, such as adolescence, disrupts the growth of brain circuits that control attention, learning, and susceptibility to addiction. All of our stakeholders understand the health risks that are in place 
um, with e-cigarettes and juuling, it becomes much more difficult. We don't have the same smoke that we see, the same smell that we see, and it is very clear from some of the flavors that are marketed that this is directed straight towards youth and students. Flavors like unicorn vomit, bubble gum, popcorn. These are not flavors designed to help a 35-year-old quit smoking. These are clearly targeted to youth. Parents and teachers are largely clueless, partly because the devices are designed because they're to be really easy to hide. You can hold it in the palm of your hand. You can stick it in your watch band, and nobody even sees them. These vape campaigns are about helping kids understand that e-cigarettes, vapes, jewels, whatever they call them these days, are the most effective delivery device known to men for the introducing the most addictive substance on the planet to your body. What I really wanted to speak on on behalf of our schools was to reach out to our parents to understand uh, what these nicotine delivery systems uh, look like, uh, how they operate, have conversations with your children. It is important that we address this issue with our children um, so that uh, we can reduce e-cigarettes like we have done with conventional cigarettes. Let's end vaping together. Fern Creek Elementary students line the sidewalks of their school to help welcome home the Fern Creek High School Marine Corps JROTC drill team following another championship game. The Fern Creek Lady Leatherneck drill team earned its 20th first place win in the mixed arts division of the National High School Drill Championship. Thank you all for being out here today. We got to help WLKY set up the mobile desk that they use at a lot of different events. We just got to hear information about like their the, their day to day and what they got to do at the studio, and we also got to go in their van and see how they all how they switch different from camera to camera. My experience was amazing. I got to learn so much stuff from anchors themselves, the producers behind the scenes and what it really takes to have a broadcast on the road. Camp Taylor Elementary watched the KET premiere of A Day in Buck's Big World that featured the school's robotics program. Hello, my name's Kaylee Peak. My name is Peyton Lindsay. For, For Camp, Camp Taylor, Taylor Weekly, Weekly News. In this episode, the Camp Taylor robotics team and their coaches are used as role models for schools and students in Kentucky who might like to start a robotics team. I think it is pretty cool to have a TV show made at your elementary school. I really like the thought process. I like watching all the students and how they think through the issues that they're having. Thanks for watching our show. This is the crew from Burn Creek High School that's helped put this show together. You can watch entire episodes of our kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids. We are JCPS.